18 of the Busted Limes podcast. I'm your host, Paresh Maharaj, and this right here is this intro that we were talking about later on in the episode where I not only inform you that we are talking about James Gunn's The Suicide Squad, but to also give a little spoiler warning. Yes, we will be going in-depth about our thoughts on this movie, including important plot points, character deaths, character survivals, and all that good stuff. So, if you want to remain unspoiled and just want our general thoughts about it, here they are. It's a really good movie, possibly my favorite of the year, so go out and see it as soon as you can. Alright, so this is your last chance to get out while you still can and remain unspoiled. Here we go. So... Suicide Squad. Hell yes. But <laughs> let's just get this out of the way first. Uh, it's better than the original, obviously. Low bar, but also better than the rest of the DCEU. Also low bar. Yeah. Despite <laughs> okay. Only like two installments that you could really say that for, Shazam and Wonder Woman. I would say Aquaman. A lot uh, of other people would say Aquaman. Yeah, that that's true. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, aside from Shazam... Wonder Woman, and Aquaman. The DCEU has been hit or miss, mostly miss, but bringing in the twisted, brilliant mind of James Gunn to do what he does best, to take a bunch of characters nobody really knows or cares about, who are honestly kind of pathetic, and make us all care about them a lot. I mean, he made The Suicide Squad. He was really, I think the moment he was announced to make this movie, everybody knew he was the perfect choice. Absolutely, because it's, and that's, it just lives up to the hype too it's exactly as good as you would expect suicide squad from the director of the guardians of the galaxy movie to be yeah so i mean let's just i don't know that we need to dwell too much on the plot necessarily i mean just going like straight pros i think you know everything that james gunn like has built his brand off of he shines at in this i mean the character writing is phenomenal Mm -hmm. i mean I don't say this lightly, he managed to make me laugh at Pete Davidson telling jokes, something SNL has never managed to do. Oh! Until this movie came out, I was unwilling to qualify Pete Davidson as a comedian. (laughs) I am willing to accept... Now, now my only... I'll actually give one um, small criticism. Okay. I actually think Pete Davidson was miscast in his role in this movie. If they had cast him as the weasel, they could have saved a bunch of money on CGI and special effects, and they wouldn't have to change anything else. Ouch! (laughs) <laughs> yeah, oh, no. boy. <clears throat> i i don't mean to offend pete davison i don't have anything against him personally i just don't think he's funny and he looks like he hasn't slept since 2017 bc damn <laughs> what the circles huh. under his eyes looks like it could take a standardized test with them jesus okay anyway well, but... um, <laughs> positives right um okay. yeah i Seriously, I think everybody in this movie was perfectly cast, even the people who were only there for 10 minutes. Exactly. And by which, we're, oh, yeah, just heads up. Uh, this, we're just going straight into spoilers here because oh, it's yeah. been like, what, a um, couple of weeks now yeah. since it's been out yeah. on each movie. Now, that whole beach scene was somehow both hilarious and dis- surprisingly morbid at the same time. Yeah. But I mean, that's James Gunn, like his balance of dark humor and like talking about black humor. Like, skipping ahead a little bit to that camp scene, going from the humor of Peacemaker and Bloodsport showing off all their kills to, oh shit, those are the good guys. Yeah, (laughs) which is just masterful. I know, like, only James Gunn, not only James Gunn, but I mean, if you told me that that was going to be a scene in a movie like this, I would probably not feel, like, comfortable with it being pulled off unless I knew someone like James Gunn was behind it. Absolutely, because he's been doing, he's been at this since whatever year Slither came out, because... If you haven't seen Slither, watch Slither. Yeah, no. <laughs> Honestly, that movie is probably a better testament to his ability to make this in Guardians of the Galaxy. Perfectly. Yeah. Um, and uh, as for specifics, um, he somehow managed. I just love that he's how he's able to balance just like that campy, uh, gr- gross out humor with uh, strong character writing, and he even does that as far as as early as the first scene yeah. with. Um, my rooker playing um, savant. savant yeah, yeah. He, he manages to succeed where who, who uh, testament to how good the original was who was the guy who was just there to get killed off again he literally S- slipknot only, slipknot yeah he does uh, he succeeds where the slipknot in the first movie failed yeah. by only serving to be 
the character who shows that Amanda Waller is serious about the bombs in their head. Yeah. And again, like to talking about like, you know, not just casting, but the characters he chose to be in this. I mean, he dug deep into the dumpsters of DC lore to fill out the cast of this movie. Who the fuck is the detachable kid? Arm fall off boy. Arm fall he off. literally just took arm fall off boy and changed his name. <laughs> Which, who the fuck is arm fall off boy? Dude, you don't know about arm fall off boy? I do. You don't know about the motherfucking arm fall off boy? No! He will take off his arm and beat you with it. Okay. And... Then lose two panels later, because he's a motherfucking arm fall off boy. That's all he can do. He is not a versatile fighter. Okay, well, it, I, well, it, it explains why he doesn't like. He lasts just as long as uh, plenty of the other characters yeah. in, in the first ten which minutes I, of this movie. Which, yeah, I mean, and credit to James Gunn. You know that scene is perfect for um, you know, setting the stakes accurately. Mm -hmm. But I mean, also not to be underestimated. And like this is one of those things where like you know it helps if you saw the first one, but it really doesn't matter. And I don't think you should put yourself through that if you haven't already. Agreed. But you know, killing off Captain Boomerang straight away. One of the few returning characters in the previous movie, after taking just enough time to establish that yes, he has pre-existing connections to some of these other characters. Mm -hmm. Which, on the subject of mm -hmm. returning characters, let's talk about the amazing glow-ups that Harley Quinn and Rick Flag went through. Especially, uh, even I would say even Rick Fla Rick Flair, Rick Flag even more so. I mean, yeah, no, took him from generic white bread military protagonist to one of the most genuinely funny and endearing characters in this whole movie. In this whole franchise, yeah. Shout out yeah. to Film Rescue Squad for their fucking um. J. Courtney Kinnaman, um, Logan, whatever. Jivenish Kinnaman Timblewood. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying he doesn't deserve to be in that, um, portmanteau anymore, but I mean, this is easily his best showing since that term was coined. I would say, I would go so far as to say that he's earned his way out of it. Yeah. It, it, give him a couple more movies. Mm hmm Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because I I think I think uh, my, I'm proud of myself for the I tweeted out uh, the there was a side by side comparison of the original Rick Flag and the this one yeah. this one Rick Flag and the original Rick Flag you you could literally Photoshop him into any movie poster of the generic military shooty man movies from the past twenty years yeah and no one would notice yeah no there was. Yeah. They made him a character in this movie. Yes. And I mean, what more needs to be said about Viola Davis as Amanda Waller other than it's Viola da Davis? It, that, uh, yet another thing that they absolutely could not change from the original no. because I mean, it would have been blasphemous. Honestly, though, you can tell she's having fun in this movie. Yeah. Because <laughs> I love the, again, James Gunn balancing humor. Like, Amanda Waller is a fucking psychopath, but seeing her try to figure out how to play office golf in the middle of a mission is the funniest goddamn thing I've ever seen. Yes, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, no. And then, of course, where the real heart of this movie lies, a new character is introduced. You know, the highlights being King Shark, Bloodsport, Ratcatcher 2, and Polka Dot Man. Fucking Polka Dot Man, which, l let's just take those characters one at a time. Let's And uh, let's start with the quote-unquote simplest one of them, King Shark. Yeah, I mean, you have Sylvester Stallone playing a... Uh, giant talking shark with a dad bod and um jean shorts like he i i, I i'm trying to uh, steer away from the guardians of the galaxy comparisons but he is basically this team's groot he's no i mean i will say like i've listened to a bunch of other james gunn interviews before this james gunn went on record basically saying um polka dot man is this movie's rocket and king shark is this movie's groot oh well there you go yeah, yeah. i mean he's he knows what he's about exactly and i know like king shark is it's funny he manages to be so such a strange balance of endearing and unsettling. So, oh but my I mean, god, he's a yeah. fucking shark. Like they, I'm not joking when I say that they nailed like the way his eyes capture like the you know aura of a shark. I don't know if that's the right word. Yeah, the the the, 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 <clears throat> the demeanor. The yeah. yeah. And to be clear, I fucking love sharks. Have a very healthy respect and fear of sharks. Mm. But, I mean, they are fucking terrifying, and King Shark pulls that off well. But he's also fucking adorable. Yeah. And if he ate me in my sleep, I could not hold that against him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Ultimate betrayal in this movie, though, was when those tiny little uh, sea and enemy little creatures yeah. just started biting him. His new it's, dumb friends. His new dumb friends betrayed him. It's uh, mm, We've yeah, all been there, though. True. True. Who among us hasn't made new dumb friends that immediately tried to cannibalize us? I could count them on one hand. What happened to your other hand? Shit! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, but then, of course, Polka Dot Man, who we just mentioned. I mean, 
I saw a headline the other day. It was like David Dastmalkion has hit the um character actor gold mine. Mm-hmm. I mean, he has. Yeah. Who? Oh God, he was. Was he also in Rogue One? No, he the... was in um the Ant Man movies. He's the um one of Scott's friends with a Russian accent. Ah. And then he was in the Dark Knight as one of the um corrupt um mentally ill police officers that works with Two Face. Oh my God. Okay, then yeah, he's. Yeah, gold yeah. mine. Yeah, and I mean, he's been in a bunch of other stuff as well. I mean, he's a brilliant actor, and I mean, a real, I mean, again, talking about depth, like, James Gunn literally Googled the dumbest, lamest comic book characters, picked the one from the top of the list, Polka Dot Man, gave him a super tragic backstory, and cast one of the best character actors out there to play him. And the best running gag in the entire movie. Yeah, no. <laughs> again, I that I will say, I legitimately only think James Gunn could make that work. Because it is just... Of course, it yeah. is Elba's delivery in the final battle that, you know who that is? It's your mom! <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a fly on the wall in Panama the day that James Gunn had to direct Idris Elba to say that line. <sighs> one of many scenes. Yeah, one of no. many scenes. Because, um... I mean, one cool yeah. thing I will say, um, that I learned recently about, um, David Dastamalkian playing Polka Dot Man, something that actually I don't think James Gunn knew until after he cast him. Oh. Um, is that he was born with a vitil- vitiligo, I think it's like Vitiligo. It? Vitiligo. He was born with vitiligo, and one of his derivative nicknames that his peers gave him as a child was Polka Dots. Holy shit. So he was working through some shit playing this character. I mean, the character was working through some shit. Yeah, <laughs> so I mean... If I had a dollar for every time an actor said they had to work through some weird, real world shit by playing in a James Gunn movie, I could afford tickets to go see this movie again. <laughs> I mean, oh, man. it's three or four times, but it's strange that it's happened multiple times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Speaking of working through some shit, um, so show of hands, audio medium, I know. Show of hands if you're in love with Ratcatcher 2. But rest assured, uh, listeners, both of us are raising our hands right now. Yeah. That was a rhetorical question. I would die for Daniela Melchior, like, new favorite actress. I'm going to fucking learn Portuguese and watch telenovelas now. That's just going to be a thing. Uh, uh, d- let me know when your first uh, Duolingo session is. I'll jo- I'll be there with you. Oh, the bird's already knocking on the door with a gun to my head. Motherfucker. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, no, yeah. but really, we talk about how there's so much heart in this movie, but she really is the emotional core of this movie. Absolutely. I mean, even be. First of all, credits to James Gunn for making lazy millennial jokes work and not feel like I was being, you know, directly insulted. I think that it helped that it was coming from the mouth of the un- most unlikable character on the team, but we'll get to that later. That That's also fair. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Also, just the way that, you know, she's also like the least bad character mm-hmm. and kind of grounds everybody. And, you know, there's sort of a naivety and an innocence to her mm-hmm. aside from the fact that she's also totally willing to like let you get eaten to death by a bunch of rats yeah 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 but i think something again i want to reference something that james gunn said that um kind of brings full circle why i feel like he succeeded where so many other dc movies failed mm-hmm. is he said in an early draft of this movie rat catcher dies but and you know why he said he changed his mind? Because she's awesome. Yeah. Well, well, his exact words were because I'm not that cynical, and I feel like that just sums up so much why I love about James Gunn as a filmmaker and why I love this movie. If I were to compare this movie to, say, Man of Steel or Batman vs Superman, mm-hmm. those are movies about what are supposed to be encouraging icons of justice, and they instead mm-hmm. take a very cynical, dour approach to them. James Gunn takes a movie about the most pathetic, unlikable assholes you could imagine and fills it with so much heart and optimism. That is just spot on. We, I can honestly end the episode right there. That was yeah, fucking beautiful. I, I was <laughs> debating whether I should hold off on saying that or not, but I mean, like... But we've still got plenty more yeah, to we, talk about yeah, in, I mean, in this movie. But th- that's the thing, and that's what Ratcatcher best symbolizes in this movie, is that, like, she controls rats. Exactly. That's her whole thing. Mm-hmm. But she is far and away one of the most powerful members of the team powerful and and it, it's good just to build off more of your point about making lazy millennial jokes work is that it actually feels like they were written by someone who regularly interacts with millennials or at least understands uh, right. how they operate because the the first i think the introductory scene we get to ragcatcher is that she's having trouble waking up yeah because she she's her, her thing in this movie mm-hmm. is that she's sleep deprived and a super deep sleeper mm-hmm. yeah which same yeah the only thing that I was a little iffy on was the joke about her not knowing what an overhead projector was. 
but A, mm. she was homeless growing up, and B, I'm not sure if the reason I know what an overhead projector was is because my school's budget was really bad, or if they were just actually still a thing when I was in school. Yeah, that's that's also a good point. Like, they were mm. definitely a thing when I was in school. Should they have been? Hard to say. I think in my case, it definitely was 90s kid here. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no, but... All of a sudden, we haven't even gotten to Idris Elba yet. I mean, there's a lot to talk about in this movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Idris mm. fucking Elba mm. as Bloodsport. I think he was possibly one of the biggest surprises in this movie, because going in, at first appearance, a lot of people, I think, thought he would just be, like, a replacement for Will Smith's Deadshot. But he's so much more, and, like, very much, you know, mm. his own interest and character. Yeah. yeah, he's got... Well, I will say this, though. He's got... I think he would... He does kind of have a similar character arc oh, to Deadshot, yeah. but it's much better. Well, I mean, he has a similar yeah. premises character arc where he's mm -hmm. in a hitman who, like, you know, has a daughter. Mm -hmm. The difference being that Deadshot from the beginning wants to be a good dad. Mm -hmm. Dead, um, Bloodsport kind of has to be dragged, kicking and streaming to admitting that he's a kind of a good person. Exactly. And the, Which, the, honestly... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Involuntary redemption arcs. I don't know if you could call that in this case, but involuntary redemption arcs are my favorite kind of redemption arc. Because, like, <laughs> my favorite kind of moment is the moment where the asshole character turns around, takes two steps away, stops, and is like, oh, fuck, and then turns and immediately runs into combat. Which is exactly what we get here. Right. <laughs> I mean, the good old Han Solo gambit works for a reason. Uh huh, exactly. If you exactly. build it up properly. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. yeah, it does. And, um, and speaking of characters that aren't redeemed, John fucking Cena as Peacemaker. Holy oh, shit. Jesus Christ. I mean, this is the character who inspired the comedian from Watchmen, so... I mean, listen, <laughs> I... James Gunn is a fucking... And whoever James Gunn has doing, like, his cast directing, like, whoever his casting director is deserves a raise and an Oscar. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. such a perfectly mm -hmm. cast role on a meta level, and then John... I think, honestly, Peacemaker only works because John Cena's playing him. That's exactly it, yes. I yes. mean, I don't, mm -hmm. I cannot think of a single other actor who could pull that off, honestly. Like, mm -hmm. the, I mean, and John Cena, like, is so great at just, his delivery is so deadpan, but he's a fucking psychopath. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know. And mm -hmm. again, like, I think my favorite thing about um, Peacemaker, of course, is his dynamic with um, Bloodsport and later Rick Flagg. Uh -huh. Like, if mm -hmm. I could describe Bloodsport and Peacemaker's dynamic, it's what happens when you have a lawful e evil character as your protagonist and a lawful good character as your antagonist. Precisely. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah, he's great in the action scenes. He's great. His, his comedy is fantastic. I mean, yeah. we've always known John Cena has great comedy chops, but him mm -hmm. as a overly violent antagonist douchebag captain america was brilliant yeah. he i think the reason why john cena as peacemaker works uh peace keep is a peace peacekeeper peacemaker peacemaker. I peacemaker. Say, peacemaker okay the reason why he makes peacemaker work so well is because he's so good at projecting that energy of that kid in high school who is a little too eager to sign up at the recruitment table yeah no he's basically a what happens when grotc kids grow up oh, too too real why did they have to have recruitment tables at high schools anyway? Also, I feel like they kind of glossed over the fact that he has a sword that he uses regularly in combat. I mean, at that point in the movie, I just sort of accepted it. No, I mean, <laughs> I feel like there's comedic potential there. Like, Bloodsport is, like, mowing down legions and Peacemaker is charging the sword. He's like, why do you have a sword in the middle of a fucking combat? So he's like, I'm trained in all manner of weaponry, but why do you have a fucking sword? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, okay, yeah, I'll actually give you that one. That was, that was kind of... A tiny missed opportunity, but... You know, Listen, whatever, I'm, but I'm not going to... The only thing I think was a real missed opportunity that James Gunn mentioned that I agree with is there's a deleted scene that explains right. why um, Waller put Rick Flagg on the beach team instead of Blood Sports team. Yeah, why was that? Um, So apparently the scene was there was going to be a flashback where Rick Flagg is making fun of a really like ugly, colorful shirt Amanda Waller is wearing, and it causes... like His joke is like, oh, it looks like a clown shit on her. <laughs> and it causes, a, and it causes like a bunch of her subordinates to start laughing at her. So mm. she basically just, out of spiteful revenge, puts Flag on the beach team. Ooh. Mm. Which what does it say about Waller's mentality that she thinks Harley Quinn should have gone on the Expendables team? Oh shit! Yeah, yeah I didn't. No even sense think... of brand loyalty there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Speaking of well. Speaking of Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. Harley fucking I mean, Quinn. This is great because it's a post-Birds of Prey Harley Quinn. You know, mm -hmm. No joke. Well, she's cut away from the Joker. She's really, like, being her own self. And, like, I think at this point most comic fans would agree Harley at this point works – is much more interesting separate from Joker. Absolutely. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, the Joker-Harley 
unfortunate dynamic. You know, it's classic. It's a part of the comic lore, but Harley mm-hmm. Quinn's grown as a character over time so much. She's much more interesting by herself, I think. Oh, yeah. Dude, whenever you get a chance, watch that animated series. It is yeah, legitimately it's, it's on the list. Like, I think oh, yeah. this, ironically, this movie is finally what convinced me, I think, to go check it out. Oh, well, fantastic. Yeah, definitely going to go check that out. Um, Should we just go ahead and say Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn, the single best casting choice in all the DC movies? Ooh, hmm, the single, uh, I mean, Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman is kind of up there, isn't it? I mean, that depends on how you feel about Gal Gadot as a person. That is very true. <laughs> uh, just Google that, um, mm-hmm. if you dare. Um, as a matter of fact, yeah. May- honest- I think close second, maybe Jason Momoa as Aquaman. Hmm. But I still think Margot Robbie is better. Okay, yeah. I mean, I mean, on its own, if we're talking just relatively speaking um, to other characters, then I think it's still debatable. But on its own merit, I honestly think she's up there with Christopher I, Reeve as Superman. I think it's fair to say that her, she is... I think when it comes to you know, adaptations in general, especially characters that are adapted multiple times, there's going to be one or two actors that are like the iconic performance for that character, mm-hmm. like with James Bond. Right. Th- like, yeah. everybody either thinks it's Sean Connery, Pierce Brosnan, or Daniel Craig. Exactly. It's whichever mm-hmm. one you grew up with. Mm-hmm. I-, I mean, I think Margot Robbie at this point is the Harley Quinn. Absolutely. Because she's you could tell how much she actually respects this character. Because apparently that one stunt where she choked the dude out with her thighs and then used the... Grab the key with her toe and then put the key in the lock. Apparently that was all her. Yeah, James Gunn actually... Um, Said by, if you want to hear James Gunn's more detailed, you know, thoughts on like the screenwriting process for this movie, I had listened to his interview on the Script Apart podcast. I believe it's called Script Apart FM. Check that out; it's pretty good interview. Um, I but yeah, he actually said one of his regrets with this movie is that Margot Robbie did that um stunt by herself. But in the shot they use in the movie, her ha- wrist is covering her face, so it looks like a stunt double is doing it. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, yeah. Comes, yeah, yeah. No, but it's. Yeah, she's great. She has such great character moments as well as, you know, she's like, you know, when your taste in men is bad as mine, you have to look out for red flags. And killing kids is a red flag. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, I promised myself if I started dating a guy and he showed any red flags, I'd do the healthy thing and murder him. Which she does. Ladies, I- take note. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I am, I was equally surprised at her that that gun actually had a bullet in there. Yeah, no, that's just irresponsible. <laughs> that, well, kind of in the same vein, but, you know what? Uh, no, no, no. Well, I'll move on to this later, but, uh, but, I think Harley Quinn's escape is the second best action sequence in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would agree with Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't care where those flowers came from. <laughs> they, it's it's a fucking comic book movie. It, it's like, listen, if you made it past Polka Dot Man, you don't get to question where the flowers came from. Correct. Just correct. Yeah. And that's another thing. When you mentioned it was a, it's a comic book movie, I think this is the only comic book movie I've ever seen where it actually manages to somehow replicate the feeling of reading a comic book. I know, it has fucking chapter mm. breaks for God's sake, but I mean, really, the um, the way everything is framed and moves mm-hmm. and the lighting and everything, it feels like, a, it really does feel like a comic book come to life. Yeah, even those tiny moments uh, where they, the moment where they find Rick, Rick Flagg, you just manage... You could just easily imagine one panel they're opening the curtain. The next panel is Rick, is Rick Flagg's surprise face looking at them like I know. Why? <laughs> it's yeah. I I feel like there's like if I was still on Reddit, there's you know potential for a series of posts where you just take frames from that movie and add speech bubbles to it to show that it really is composed like a comic book. Oh my god, yeah. And that that two page uh, that uh, a two page spread of the entire scene where Bloodsport and. Um, peacemaker are trying to one-up each other oh yeah <laughs> that's such a great bit of dialogue there's like no one likes to show off they do if what you're showing off is dope, dope as, as fuck. fuck turns around fuck that is true <laughs> <laughs> yeah great character boy. and even talking about the we've been talking about the action scenes even the sl- i just when i saw that this movie was to over two hours i actually breathed a sigh of relief yeah because that uh, said to me that there are going to be moments where the the characters are just allowed to breathe. And again, oh, yeah. this is as early as the opening scene, that entire scene where they're waiting for their parish wait to drop. Yeah. I mean, and if you can expect one thing from James mm-hmm. Gunn is heart wrenching, heart to heart character moments between the fight scenes. Mm-hmm. The scene on the bus. Yep. That scene. Ugh. I mean, it's James Gunn doing what he does best. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And I mean, to be what he does best, I mean, mother fucking 
Starro the Conqueror in a movie. Ah! Holy shit, the moment I saw that trailer, I knew that this was going to be great. But I mean, James Gunn did it justice. That, in that mm. interview I was talking mm. about earlier, this is why I love James Gunn, because he's so frank about things. Mm. He straight up said when he was thinking about villains, he was like, okay, well, Star Wars Conqueror is probably never going to be done in a movie. And if he does, it's probably going to be a uh, direct words from James Gunn, probably going to be like a Black Cloud version of Star Wars the Conqueror. So I want to just do him and do him right. Oh, but they, if, <laughs> if you want something done right. Do it yourself. Mm-hmm. I mean, first of all, kaiju fight and a superhero movie. Exactly. Well, the, you remember how I mentioned that the Harley's escape is the second best actor yeah. scene? The entire, the last 30 minutes, which is my candidate for a kaiju short film of the year. Yeah. That's number one. Yeah, no, that's just such a great fight scene. I mean, it's scary as fuck, first of all. Terrifying. They, they actually made Starro more terrifying than he is in the comics. Because in the comics, his face huggers are non-lethal. Oh. Like, it's actually... That's why it's a recurring theme that he, like, takes over the Justice League. Because you can just knock him off and turn him back to normal. Oh. No take backs, he's here. Oh, God. I almost feel like it was a missed opportunity that they didn't have, like, an actual member of the Suicide Squad get face hugged at yeah, some point. Yeah, th- honestly, I... I mean, here's the thing. Yeah. You explicitly see Bloodsport's helmet get shattered at some point. I thought for sure he was... Or something's gonna happen, but like, mm-hmm. I'm, I mean, I'm fine with the fact they didn't. It's still fun. Yeah, because honestly, if uh, I was halfway expecting Ratcatcher to catch it, oh yeah, you know? Ratcatcher poke it up, man. Mm-hmm. I think the moral of the story there, folks, is wear a mask. Wink, wink. Just We're still let in that, a pandemic. Just gonna, just gonna let that sink in. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're only on one audio track. You can't edit out anything I'm saying. Absolutely. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, and of course you have Peter Capaldi as the thinker, which I mean... Which is Peter Capaldi as the thinker. Yeah, I'm, I don't... Do we need to say anything else about that? Um... Arguably I don't as want to. Un, arguably as unnerving as a giant alien starfish from hell? Yeah, considering his answer to Ratcatcher's inquiry as to whether he wants a rat up his ass. Yeah, we're just gonna let you think about that. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um... I think a good segue from that is to talk about how one really refreshing thing about this movie is that the U.S. government is the bad guys. Yes! It's really refreshing to see a <laughs> superhero movie that isn't, like, jerking off the U.S. with one hand mm-hmm, mm-hmm. while doing the movie with the other hand. I had a thing there. I don't know where I was going with it. You know what I mean. I'm sure it's an MCU jab. Sure. Yeah. Sure, let's yeah. go with that. <laughs> Why did you use Captain Marvel as an army recruiting thing? <sighs> anyway, but anyway, yeah, no, but... like the legitimate, you know, putting out, hey, the U.S. has done some fucked up shit, and they will do anything to cover it up on foreign soil. Mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah, no, these last guys were dictators, but we cooperated with them. But now these new guys are also dictators, but we don't like them, so eliminate them. <laughs> and, yes, if that if that makes you do the make make a confused face, yeah, the, yeah, you, try you... taking a history course in the United States. <laughs> Wait, why did we invade this country? Stop asking questions and take notes on why we are really good at our job. Anyway, after mm-hmm. we did not lose the Vietnam War, but we didn't win either, call it a tie. <laughs> well, we retreated from Saigon. It kind of feels like we lost. We didn't say we lost, so we didn't lose. I don't think that's how that works. I'm the teacher here. You that's an, concerning me. You have an F. <laughs> that's why we're podcasters. Exactly. <laughs> Because we are just masters of staying yeah, on no. topic. Speaking of staying on topic, uh, is there any other um, hi- like I think at this point to where we've just, we kind of talked about the characters yeah, okay, enough. Let's so, just talk about fa- highlights now. Okay, most surprising death. Most surprising. Um, I, mm, I think hmm. for me it's Rick Flag. Rick Flag mm. was the only death that I legitimately thought was going to make it to the end of the movie. Hmm. Now, granted, that was a little blind spot on you with the comics. In the comics, when Rick Flag died, it was on a Jotunheim mission. So, uh, probably okay. that, but like, I assumed that, like, as a returning character who was like kind of the main character of the previous one, he would stick around for at least another movie. Mm-hmm. But like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, yeah. That's, if yeah, any, honestly, I was just a little disappointed that he died because I was hoping Kinnaman would get more chances to keep fleshing this character out. Yeah, that's a good but point. I mean, yeah. The death hits harder because of that. Exactly. Like, if we were okay with him dying, it wouldn't matter that he died. Exactly. Yeah. And um, I'd sp- just to go back to the scene, just to analyze the scene where he did die, um, they, that, that stupid uh, throwaway line about how it's not a toilet bowl, it's a, uh, what did he call it again? What did he call it something again? Symbol of justice or something? Oh, yeah, his helmet. Yeah, his yeah. helmet. Good. The the fact that he calls it a symbol of justice, uh, that you keep that in mind and you see the their fight reflected yeah. in the helmet. Okay, how the fuck did they shoot that? Uh, magic 
I, I love <laughs> I love here's the thing mm-hmm. my brain gets the happy chemical from figuring out how special effects works mm-hmm. but this is what this is we're not knowing how it works it makes me even happier because it's exactly. just so fucking cool yeah there are rides yeah. at Disneyland mm-hmm. that keep me awake at night because I never figured out how they worked and then they replaced them anyway mm-hmm. um yeah that was probably the most surprising death um funniest death funniest death do we do we count Weasel? Because he doesn't die. I, mean, I, I feel like on a technicality, Weasel doesn't count. Okay. Aside, yeah. I really respect and appreciate James Gunn's insistence on casting his brother as just the shittiest fucking rodent he can in every movie he makes. <laughs> yeah. uh, Sean Gunn, you are a soldier, sir. Mm-hmm. And we appreciate your service. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, funniest If death. we're not counting Weasel... Um... Oh man, I, I guess you gotta go with polka dot man, cause I mean I don't know if that's funny. Like it's <laughs> definitely the laugh, like ha ha ha, what the fuck. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like that was a shocking death, but like I don't know if that's funny. Funny, oh man. Yeah. Oh. I mean, oh wait, I think you... most of the ones on the beach probably count. You know what? I I'd say the funniest death uh, doesn't even happen uh, to a named character. Which one? Dude with his dick out that uh, that peacekeeper shoots. Oh yeah, no, that guy. <laughs> Never mind, that's the answer. That's the correct answer. Oh boy. Yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Also, in case you're wondering, James Gunn has confirmed on Twitter multiple times he does not hate birds. Because I know you were wondering that after this movie. Absolute It opens with a opens with the bird that survived. I, I I could I could just let that slide. It's a character it's a character moment. And yeah. then it it's it pays off the joke of him p- literally picking his brain after yeah. his head explodes. But then the but then he sets the freaking cage on fire. Yeah. But <laughs> words it's just evil for the sake of evil yeah I, I, I mean at the very least at least it it wasn't framed in a way that made it seem like that james gunn was reveling in it because well, yeah, we, no. we only just hear the you yeah you don't yeah. even see it happen exactly really. yeah, yeah that's yeah. one thing i give james gunn he never feels like he's you know indulging in the fucked up parts of his movies yeah and which uh, is, says a lot considering he's made his bones as a horror director mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah i really hope you can hear everything i'm saying i'm kind of trailing off at the end of some of my sentences Mm. Mm. Oh well, not being hear me, not being able to hear me is no great loss. Ouch! I, I smiled to indicate that I was a joke, and then remember, this is an audio medium. I'm going to get that figured out at some point. Uh, yeah. We need sound effects or a soundboard or something. Yeah, maybe eventually. Yeah, one day. One oh. day. Speaking of how they shot this movie, do you know they that the production crew invented a new type of camera rig for this? Holy shit! Really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Go into that. Yeah, I mean, I don't remember what it's called, but yeah, they made a new, like, gyroscopic camera rig to, like, keep the, um, you know, fluid motion where everything is moving. So, like, the camera just keeps rotating and shifting as they move along. That is, an, that is amazing, and it actually makes a lot, yeah. a lot of sense. Appar- yeah, It's not the first time James mm. Gunn's used new technology on a movie. Um, The type of camera rig that they used in 1917 to make everything look like a tracking shot, mm-hmm. they used that for the first time in Guardians 2. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. D- Hmm. I'd love to know how James Gunn keeps getting these brand new camera technologies to make his superhero movies, but I'm not going to question it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, man. Um. Yeah. No. And talk. Do you want to talk about the ex- after credit scenes? Uh. Yeah. Um. So peacekeeper. Peace. Ma- pe- peacemaker. Peacemaker. Yeah. yeah. Um. He's alive. Now, to be fair, James Gunn went on record and saying, you know, they shot that scene after he got greenlit to make the Peacemaker series for HBO Max. Mm-hmm. And he went on record saying that he kind of feels bad about it because he gives other writers for doing the, oh, they're all actually dead, fake out. He gives them shit for doing that all the fucking time. <laughs> but then he ended up having to do that. How's that crow taste, Gunn? <laughs> well, we know he doesn't like birds. <laughs> wow. That worked a little too well. But yeah, um, where where do you think they go? They take him from here? Well, like the, like where do you, I, I guess? Mean, I, I hope they let him make another one. I mean, yeah. Um, I feel like here's the thing. I feel like the next movie has to have like Bloodsport as the leader of a new Suicide Squad, right? I mean, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if there's anybody yeah. I trust to dig further into the dumpster of DC lore and find more pathetic characters for us to care about and then die gruesomely, it's James Gunn. James Gunn. Yeah. I hate to say it though. But I think of the characters that survived this movie, at least one of them would have to die if you make a sequel. 
because you don't want to mm-hmm. end up in a predictable cycle where it's like oh yeah everybody's gonna die but these three or four you know are gonna be safe in every sequel because we have to keep the recognizable cast exactly um i don't want to speculate on who that might be because that is cursed and i'm not going to curse anybody right i don't exactly. bl- mm-hmm. want to do that but no mm-hmm. like i you know i think that it's a formula that you can iterate on in interesting ways mm-hmm. like you know the first movie had them going into a captured fucked up city mm-hmm. um this one had them you know basically storming the beaches in a war movie there's really any number of directions you could go with the next one as long as you keep more or less the same framing the vo- device of waller needs a expo- expendable team of near do well to go do something for her mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and i mean even the term you know suicide squad you can play around with the implications there what I'd really like to see eventually is a Suicide Squad movie that just blatantly includes other members of the Justice League. Like, you mm-hmm. know, imagine just having a Suicide Squad mission where Batman shows up at some point. Oh, God. And that becomes mm-hmm. a whole thing. Mm-hmm. Another one mm-hmm. recommendation real quick. The DC animated movies are usually pretty good. Yeah. Usually a solid PG-13 animated already the experience. Watch Assault on Arkham. That was my first exposure to the Suicide Squad. It's really good. And um, it has a lot of the things that I enjoyed from the live action movies, like fun Harley Quinn stuff, mm-hmm. Deadshot being an interesting character, mm-hmm. Waller being mm-hmm. fucking insane. And it does at some point feature Batman. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I would like to see a Suicide yeah. Squad movie that features more like name like recognition villains, just to see the dichotomy between them and the D-listers. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any mm. like obscure villains that you would like to see in a Suicide Squad movie? Mm, well, I was got, I was gonna say Calendar Man, but we did technically see Calendar yeah, Man in this. Yeah. I was gonna say I know <laughs> Gun like teased some like other characters he thought about, including I know Man Bat and Poison Ivy were on the list at one point. Mm. I'd love to see Holly Quinn and Poison Ivy in live action. Who doesn't? Man Bat would be fun because it's an introduction scene. You could do a fake out where it looks like a Batman, but then it's Man Bat. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um killer moth because you could go yeah. two ways with him you could have him be the really fucking lame comic book killer moth or it could be the version of him from the teen titans cartoon that was actually a threat oh like well like how is he a- like he instead of just being a dude in the costume he was an actual like humanoid moth the dude with like oh, an god. army killer moth babies oh god <laughs> but like he kind of shifted the whole conceit of that um episode that i remember him from so well was him basically forcing robin to take his daughter to prom oh god it goes about as well as you would expect oh boy hmm. um yeah but yeah no killer moth would be a fun one i think um, oh man yeah, honestly this is more your wheelhouse than mine uh maybe the, with the you know what um as far you as you know what yeah. put in the trickster keep making jokes about how he's basically a joker ripoff oh my god imagine just imagine his uh chemistry with harley quinn <laughs> jeez <laughs> she'd kill him by the end of the movie honestly if like you need to have a designated squad kill like that's it probably mm, yep yeah. yep mm. yeah no Ooh, you know what would be a good choice solomon grundy <gasps> oh you know he could be a, he would make a good final boss solomon no that's a good idea mm. that's yeah i'd like to see like a, a suicide squad final boss that's maybe a little bit more grounded like a solomon grundy type we've done the kaiju mm-hmm. maybe like another um name value villain like a mr freeze or something like that oh my god a, mo- a mr freeze with a modern budget oh. oh you know who would be a good like blood sport type character like uh the sort of bc list of villain but like can like stick around for most of the movie captain cold and heat wave Ooh. Ooh. i like the way you think although i would feel kind of bad seeing captain cold in a live action because i love hit the actor who played him on the cw so much i'd feel bad to see him get recast yeah 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 hollywood is a more terrifying monster than starro yeah <laughs> wait why don't they just fucking put deathstroke in one of these movies not even as a member of the squad just have him there somehow huh yeah also just putting this out there i want them to bring back will smith's dead shot so that we can get an idris elba will smith the buddy action flick which yes the world needs right now absolutely mm-hmm Honestly, just to bring back a Peacemaker and fucking throw in Joe Manganiello's Deathstroke and actually let him fucking do something for once and just have it be just a boiling cauldron of toxic masculinity and bullet holes. (laughs) Toxic masculinity and bullet holes. There's your subtitle for the next one. 
Suicide Fuck yeah, sure. Suicide Squad. Toxic masculinity and bullet holes. I could mm. just hear Harley Quinn using that to describe the rest of her squad mates. You're just a bunch of toxic masculinity and bullet holes. Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> I mean, I apologize to Margot Robbie for that horrible impression, but I think yeah. I got my point across. Yeah. Yeesh, it's like you know, a bunch of toxic... Ma- yeah, I can't do it. I can't. I was trying to get the pitch. I can do the accent, I just can't do the pitch. Yeah, exactly, same here. A bunch of toxic here. masculinity and bullet holes. <laughs> I haven't been shot yet. Give it a couple minutes. Give it a couple minutes. <laughs> But wait, I can't believe one scene, uh, I honestly think my favorite part in the entire movie was Ma- Mal- Malman? Milton. Milton! Oh, oh my god, they shot Milton! Milton was still with us? <laughs> That's so hilarious, I, because that I was literally died my exact... laughing watching that scene. <laughs> and then Harley's like, wait, who's Milton? <laughs> oh god, those small character work, because that's the kind of shit that, the tangents that you run off on but like no matter the situation whether you're trying to save the save a third world country from american bullshit or maybe recording an audio medium i have no idea what you're implying i've never done anything wrong in my entire life of course you haven't nope that you remember anyway um man is there really anything what else is there to do we have any complaints about this movie any I mean, I said we'll start with the positives. Do we have any negatives? Um, well, let's see, forty minutes worth of positives. Oh, uh, I mean, uh, let me see a straw I could grasp at here. Um, I mean, given the type of humor that this movie was going for, there were. I think I really think the only, and it's not even a joke. It's meant to show just how horrific. Uh, yeah. The thinker is, is that one throwaway line where... Uh, oh, yeah, Star Wars says he had his way with him. Yeah, the, the, the thinker just kind of shrugs. Yeah. But again, I did, that's just me just grasping uh, at something. Just I mean, cause... listen, we've seen James Gunn's Twitter. We know that he knows how to draw a line now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I feel like this movie's kind of proof of that. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, you want to get into that? Just uh, how you think this movie has uh, shown how he's ma- matured as a director? I think so. It feels like a very mature take on the medium. Yeah, because it's sh- he James Gunn really does have his cake and eat it too. He has a fun, gore, blood-soaked, gore, gore-fest romp, and has his heartfelt character moments. Because because when the gore does happen, it's kind of not only are the big gore scenes like really spread out, but they're kind of. Yeah, like quick and to the point. Uh, uh, ironically, none of the violence feels gratuitous, even though you literally have people's heads exploding. Like mm-hmm. it sounds weird, but every time someone's head explodes, it feels earned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I will say though, I think the only like really indulgent part was the X-ray kill for Rick Flag. I think that was the only. That thing was a but... bit, but I feel like that was also kind of his way of saying like, no, no, look, it went into his heart. His heart is in two pieces now. He's not coming back. He's dead. He's died. I'm not faking it out. After credits, Peacemaker's fine though. <laughs> Red Flag's definitely dead though He's dead I killed him He's dead mm-hmm. <laughs> Small bullets that, that was a really cool scene though It was As the exact kind of comic bullshit you want from this mm-hmm. Yeah mm-hmm. 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 Can we talk about how Harley Quinn kind of toppled the entire government in an afternoon Just because she had a bad day I, 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 we, could, we could start with how that actually didn't occur to me Until you pointed it out And I saw this movie twice I mean, she does. <laughs> yeah, she... Oh, she I'm had sorry. a bad date. Bad date, which... And toppled she... a small nation's government. Pretty much single-handedly. Yeah. Before her team... Before the rest of her team could... Uh, yeah. Which, although uh, I thought they showed too much of that to see in the trailer, no. Yeah. It, they, they showed just enough. Also, in hindsight, something I didn't realize that they were spoiling in the trailers, Harley is running around with that javelin in a lot of scenes in the trailer. Now, to be mm. fair, I don't think anyone expected Javelin to have a meaningful role in this movie. Oh, no still... one did. Yeah. Who, yeah what no. was the name of the guy who had it again? Javelin. Oh. No, his name was literally Javelin. Oh. Oh, wow. Well. Mm. I am Javelin. This is my Javelin. That, that's his thing. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, what was that guy's name with the Javelin again? Javelin? Yeah, this thing. What was his name? <laughs> that could easily be a quote from this movie. Probably. No, so what do you think was the funniest joke in the movie? Oh, boy. Uh, we already talked about the they killed Milton. I think mm-hmm. when early on for me, I said, like, it was a miracle that made me laugh at Pete Davidson joke. Like, when he was saying it's the weasel, he's like, is this a dog? <laughs> How do you think it looks like a dog? Well, I'm not an expert at all the breeds of dogs. Like, I think it's an Afghan hound. Oh, is that a werewolf? She sat uh, me down next to a werewolf. A werewolf? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God. That reminds me of uh, Captain Boorag's... Th- 
who was it? Oh, my name is MDK. It was like, is that your oh, name? Oh, TDK. Is, is that, is that, what was TDK stand for? The, stands for me. It's, you know, represents me. It's my name. It's, your name is just letters? All oh. names are letters, asshole. <laughs> I also yeah. love them hand waving Harley Quinn being in this. Is, oh, you're in prison again? Yeah, had a road rage incident. <laughs> Long story. Which uh, do you it, really want to hear Harley explain that? No, but I I, I kind of like to fill in the blanks because I saw Birds of Prey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love the idea that it was literally just being taken while was like, what Harley Quinn committed a misdemeanor? No, I don't care what county it was in. Get her to Bell Rev now. Mm. <laughs> also i love like with the line with rat capture about how the rat the state should just categorize the rat as a weapon mm-hmm. like the implication that waller is straight up like fucking up their sentences and charges to get them into jail so she can use them so many freaking like, details man I jeez i want to rewatch this movie a 20th time i know like <laughs> honestly like something to set this movie the the next movie apart from these two mm-hmm. for like the gathering the team bit this yeah is something they actually did in arkham as in the attack on arkham movie um instead of like showing each of them in the prison cell being brought out mm-hmm. have the description scenes of their powers be the scene where they get arrested even if they're <sighs> all just flashbacks like show all of them committing a crime and getting caught because mm-hmm. then that's also an excuse to show off a superhero if they got arrested by one there you go which the it original even, movie actually did, yeah, but well, know. only for Harley Quinn and Joker. But yeah, it mm-hmm. doesn't have to be the whole one. Just have a glove knock them out. Right. I mean, shit, Shazam got away with just showing Superman from the neck down. Right. I mean, honestly, like I can't. I don't know. Oh no, you know who they should put? Who? Sportsmaster. Ooh. What? Who's Sportsmaster? Literally, just like knock off evil Casey Jones, and way less cool. I'm sold. He literally wears a hockey mask in his game because he uses sports equipment as weapons. I think I may have seen him before. Yeah, yeah I just no. didn't remember him. Yeah, no, but I mean, here's the thing. Which I, you could say for half the yeah, cast of the I feel like he's a Green Arrow villain. If not, make a Green Arrow villain. Just so the gag with his introduction is him committing a crime. Then a pun- boxing glove arrow comes from off screen and knocks him out. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, man. No. Oh. James Gunn, if you're listening to this, first of all, isn't there a better way you could be spending your time? Second of all, feel free to steal any of these ideas. Uh, but also feel free to pay us for these ideas. 10% of the gross. 20. <laughs> Willing to sell for 15. Don't make us pull a Scarlett Johansson. You'll have to be way more specific with that. Don't make us uh, z- d- pull a Scarlett Johansson against Disney. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that sounds way less concerning. <laughs> Speaking of tangents. Oh, man. So. Yeah. Yeah. Says a lot that the best DC superhero movie was the one about the villains. <laughs> I mean, I just, yeah. 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 I think that sums it up. <sighs> mm-hmm. Best yeah. DC movie was the one about the villains. Yep. Well, yeah. And I really hope they let James Gunn make a sequel. Uh-huh. I'm sure he'll have time after he makes Guardians 3. <laughs> God, this man is just rolling in it. I know. He's living a fucking dream. All right, so yeah, just uh, just to sum up, final final thoughts. Really fucking good movie. Watch it, and if you've already seen it, rewatch it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, um, honestly, I'm 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 feeling bold today. Let's let's just uh, on our let's just apply our MCU uh, pl- uh tier scale here. I mean, it's a, it's a platinum in a field of bronze. Platinum in a field of bronze. <laughs> uh, you're not wrong. Yeah. You are not wrong. And, uh, yeah, I will definitely be watching the Peacemaker series as it comes out, because mm-hmm. I cannot get enough of John Cena as Peacemaker. Mm-hmm. And apparently neither could he. He loves that costume. Yeah! We've come He's a it. long way from Michael Keaton and George Clooney pissing themselves in a bat suit, apparently. That was a thing? George Clooney did. Oh, yeah, no, like, you ever heard all those back, back scene stories of people all like, yeah, no, the suit's great, but it's a pain in the ass to get out of it when you have to use the bathroom, so just uh-huh. don't need to use the bathroom. Mm. Or, like, Tom Holland needed a specific, like, Spider-Man suit that he could go to the bathroom in. Ah, uh, wow. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, it's not an issue you think about when you're reading the comics. That's true. Mm-hmm. Very true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah, people give Darth Vader shit for obviously having a dick slot on his suit, but hey, you never hear about his actor pissing himself. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's how we decided to end this. On a piss joke. I mean, honestly, at this point, do you really expect more from us? (laughs) Well, at any rate, I hope you all enjoyed the episode, and thank you for busting a line with us.